Hi guys, it's Baldrick here, and in today's episode, I'm going to be covering PC Gaming Part 5, or known as Getting Into PC Gaming Part 5. So in today's episode, I'm going to be covering what type of graphics card coolers you should be considering depending on the type of gaming PC you have. So if you're unfamiliar to my uh, gaming PC content, basically what I do is I just basically talk or commentate over some gameplay, in this case it happens to be some Battlefield 4 PC gameplay on Silk Road using a tank mainly, and yeah, that's really what I do because I don't have every single graphics card to show you, I've only got one type and it wouldn't even be worth showing you because I can just show you an image anyway. So that's how I do my commentaries like this. So, anyway, let's get started. So on the top left hand side, you will see a blower style cooler, or it's more specifically a reference GDX 780 that is using a blower cooler. So these have some pros and cons. I'll, I'll get into why you might want to consider them. So the first consideration is usually that they're the cheapest type of graphics card you can buy. Uh, because they're usually reference models and that's really good if you don't want to spend too much money on your graphics card and they usually do do a decent cooling job and another benefit is that they ex exhaust air out the back of the card so that's how it works, the blower style cooler it sucks air in and blows it out the back so it doesn't really have as much hot air going into your case as some other coolers might so it it sounds all good but it does have some uh, downsides as well so the main problem with these coolers is that it's only got one fan and obviously with one fan you're not going to get as good cooling performance compared to having multiple fans so that's one downside you may be running into some thermal limits especially on the AMD blower style cards more specifically the, the R9290X that card just sucks with its blower design it's a very bad badly designed reference card it just gets way too hot and way too loud and that's another thing it, they can be a bit louder than some of the blower style designs so that's really a, another downside but if you're into getting SLI for your uh, graphics cards uh, this is or crossfire this may be beneficial over getting a another sort of cooling option just because it blows air out the back and it doesn't bring the hot air onto the next graphics card which will cause overheating if you're unlucky. So that's another benefit. If you're going SLI uh, or if you're into the enthusiast grade graphics card and you want to add a water block to it, these are the easiest to find water blocks for but I'm, I'm, I bet I'm boring you here anyway. So I'll move on to the next graphics card which is open air designed graphics cards. So as you can see there's one there. Basically what these do, they just suck air in like a standard fan onto a massive heatsink and cool the card. So the benefit to having this type of cooler is that you can have multiple fans. The one I've got there has three fans so obviously it will do a pretty good job at cooling it. They can look pretty nice. I find they're designed to generally look better than the blower style but that's all uh, and that's just an opinion of mine, and they do offer better performance and quieter for, and quieter fans because you've got more fans, so you can run run them at lower speeds and get the same sort of cooling. Or if you want, you can run them at higher speeds and just get better cooling in general. So that's really the benefits of having this sort of fan. A downside to having it is that since it's not a blower style design, it doesn't really exhaust the air out of your graphics card it just puts it into the rest of a PC making your entire PC hotter or obviously it'll put a bit out the back of the graphics card but generally it's just gonna go back into your PC and it's gonna slowly get hotter and hotter so that it you don't to be honest you don't really notice it like I've used two block I've used two of these graphics cards that use this sort of cooler and you're not getting, uh, you're not noticing your PC getting that hot, so it's not that big of an issue. But where it can be an issue is if you're going SLI. So these cards, obviously, they blow air out, it goes everywhere in the case, and it makes your other graphics cards really hot. So this can be a pretty big issue if you're going into SLI. And another downside is, is that some of them, uh, or my graphics card actually had this issue, not that it affected me, is that it 
some of them can take up two and a half or three PCI slots, meaning SLI might not be available for you. So, if it's taking up too many slots, it may restrict your access to other components like Wi-Fi cards or stuff like that. So that's another downside. But if you like a big beefy graphics card and you don't want to go SLI, these are the perfect cards to choose, or even if you do go SLI, they generally can cope decently, but don't expect to do too much overclocking on them, unless they're, unless they're by themselves, and you can probably get some good overclocking out of them. So that's really about it for these graphics cards. Now let's move on to a more rare type of graphics card. You're generally not going to be able to find these too easily. But anyway, these are all-in-one graphics cards. So if you've heard of all-in-one liquid coolers, it's basically that on a graphics card. And I've never seen one in real life, apart from the 290X2, or the R9-295X2. And that is a very expensive card and actually does require water cooling, so that's why they've done that. So it's basically getting water cooling already built into your graphics card gonna it's gonna let you get the top overclocking results best performance that you can really get out of your graphics card the cons there really isn't too many I personally don't like the look of some of them just because the tubing doesn't look the best and the radiators could be improved but generally they're gonna outperform any uh, standard cooled graphics card so that's another reason to go with them and another reason that might be a downside is that you can't really replace the liquid that you're cooling it with but then again it should generally be fine over a long period of time and then we've got the last type of graphics card this is probably the I guess it's a bit more common than an all-in-one graphics card it is a customly water cooled graphics card so basically what this involves as you can see from the picture in the top left is getting a normal graphics card and attaching a water block to it that you connect to a custom water cooling loop uh, these have some these basically give you the best performance depending on how many radiators you got a lot of you won't really be considering this but this is going to get you the top end performance if you want to get the best graphics cards so they're going to really be beneficial for overclocking but apart from that you're not really getting much and they do cost a lot if you want to get the graphics card and the water block it's going to cost you another hundred or so dollars to get one so really that's about it for the graphics cards uh, I guess the downside to that is that it is a bit risky installing it yourself so you can stuff your graphics card up installing it but it's pretty rare. Anyway thanks for watching this video, tell me if you've learned anything in the comments and yeah tell me if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching, bye.